If you're a seasoned fan of the Nuen 51, you know the drill. You can skip ahead using the chapter markers below. If you still need your salt and pepper, let me tell you what this is about. The Nuen 51 is a project that I started in 2016 alongside my friend Infinipede. We're going through every Kanto Pokemon and giving them our own spin. We try to update their designs to look a little closer to what we see with modern Pokemon designs, and we also try to add something to make them a little more interesting. Along the way, we were joined by another friend, Banana Meteor, and we're finally getting close to actually finishing the project. We had a lot of delays and breaks early on. In this video series, we look back at some of our previous designs to talk about the concept, the process, and reflect on whether we're still happy with the end result. Today we're not covering any of Infinipede's designs, so Banana Meteor and I will be going back and forth talking about our designs for Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, Lickitung, Coughing and Wheezing, and Rhyhorn and Rhydon. Let's start with Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. I took the lead on these designs. The main issue I have with the originals is that even though they function as a pair, and conceptually they are a pair, the kicking Pokémon and the punching Pokémon, they don't actually share almost any design elements. But in Gen 2, their shared baby form, Tyrogue, actually manages to tie those two designs together really well. It has elements from Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan, and Hitmontop, while also bringing its own identity. So even though we don't normally look to later gen evolutions for our designs, in this case I referenced Tyrogue and Hitmontop heavily as a good way to bring them together. The style of the feet comes from Hitmonlee and Hitmontop, the style of the clothes and the padding on the sides of the head come from Tyrogue, the bandages come from Hitmonlee and Tyrogue, and the general body shape comes from Hitmonchan and Tyrogue. Additionally, there's this one depiction of Bruno's Hitmonlee in one of the manga series that shows its legs as literal coiled springs. I love that image, and it also made me think of ARMS, the game where everyone punches with spring-loaded arms, which fits perfectly with Hitmonchan. I'm really happy with how these designs turn out. I think they very much look like brothers, but they still keep plenty of their individual personality. The main thing that bothers me is that I don't think I captured the action, the movement of the stretching springs, all that well. So even though I meant for these to be very dynamic drawings, they still feel pretty static. But the designs themselves, I think, are great. Next up is Lickitung, which Banana Meteor came up with, so she'll tell you all about it. My favorite! My favorite! <laughs> One of my favorite images of Lickitung that feels very iconic to me is the uh, fossil set TCG card where it is reaching up into the trees to grab this bunch of bananas. And it's, it's grabbing them with its tongue. It's like reaching up to grab them, which kind of made me wonder, like, why Lickitung had arms in the first place? Which is a rude thing to say, why someone has arms. But, like, as, as far as the design goes, I feel like it's more interesting to lean into its tongue as the thing that it um, interacts with the world with and uh, utilizes to to like pick things up and attack because it's it's kind of the tongue Pokemon. That's the cool thing about it. I did have like a little picture that I drew of it like using its tongue to like grab a, a cup of soda or something. And uh, I just thought it would be really cool to make that its main thing and, and even accentuate it more than it already has. We kind of changed some of the markings on the body to look more tongue-like. Uh, it was really just all about tongue with this one. We ended up putting the tongue markings on the tail as well, because I think we decided it looked a little bare. And uh, it looks like we also changed the nail color to that beige that it's got on its body, which I'm totally fine with because that was the only thing that was white before, and that might have just been like a holdover to me from the original design. I feel that it's pretty successful. I think that the only issue I have with it is because I made the whole uh, bit about its, its prehensile tongue, it would look very good in motion if it was kind of like coming in and out and grabbing things, and you can't really illustrate that in a static image, but we don't have time to make all these in motion, so <laughs> I'm happy with how it worked out. Maybe I would decide on a different thing on the head instead of the eyebrows, because it's kind of like a hot meme now that every design I make has eyebrows. I'm pretty happy with the overall, uh, the overall result. All right. Back to me with a pretty out there take on coughing and wheezing. If you have arachnophobia, you might want to skip this one. I don't really have anything against the originals, at least not their design, but the original concept is really boring. They're basically just balloons of poison gas. So I wanted to add a little spice to them, and I came up with something really unexpected. 
I turned coughing and wheezing into ballooning spiders. These spiders can use their silk to fly through a combination of electromagnetism and wind, and they can sometimes fly for kilometers at a time. So my take on coughing and wheezing turns them into tiny spider Pokémon that make big balloons out of toxic thread to float around on. The spiders themselves are meant to look like the skull and crossbones markings from the originals, and they have these big face patterns on the balloons as an intimidation or a distraction tactic. There is some Pokedex evidence that suggests that new coughing heads butt off from wheezing as they grow, so in our case, Weezing carries around its offspring, so that thing on the second balloon is basically a spider egg that will hatch into a coughing and then go off on its own. I know the concept here is really different from original coughing and wheezing, but I felt like I had to do something new to make them exciting. If I just kept them as toxic balloons, there wasn't much I could have done differently. And so even though I get that these may not really feel like coughing and wheezing anymore, I do still really like the end result. And to finish off for today, here's Banana Meteor again with her concepts for Rhyhorn and Rhydon. I think the original Rhyhorn and Rhydon are a little too thematically similar to the Geodude line in that generation. They're just kind of like both rocky guys and even Onyx to some extent. So I thought about taking that in a different uh, direction that was still sort of rocky and groundy, and my jumping off point was... Uh, Garage tools. One of the other things that, uh, in addition to tools, is uh, Rhyhorn just kind of always reminded me of a dad. He sort of got like that dad bod aesthetic. I also leaned into that and gave his neck sort of like a craggy rock beard, maybe that uh, your, your dad working with power tools would have. It also has that shirt thing going, right? Yeah, I totally forgot I did that. It's sort of meant to be this this shirt that would be like riding up and 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 sort of revealing the uh, the 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 belly of the dad, if you will. I guess it's weird if you think about it too much, <laughs> but uh, as a more abstract concept, I, I feel like it works fine, and it's got the the stains on it too. The dirty stains of someone who's been hard at work in their garage. I wanted to pick different tools that had a strong, recognizable uh, visual element to them. Uh, for Rhyhorn, the legs are supposed to kind of look like that rubber grip that a, a hammer or a drill would have. And uh, even its body is, is covered in kind of these sawtooth spines and uh, these little tiny, um, I think it was supposed to be reminiscent of a hammerhead, but now that I'm looking at it, it looks a little more like magnets. So maybe that leans into steel too much, but uh, I think we were definitely going for like a hammer and a wrench. For Rhydon... Uh, I really love the idea of this this drill on the top of its head, but I always feel like the original design didn't lean into that enough. It, it almost looked more like a unicorn horn, so I wanted to extra make it look like a, a large excavating drill, and then uh, the spines on its back are sort of like uh, the spines you would find on a saw. It looks like we tweaked the color a little bit. Um, for whatever reason, we decided to go with an orangier color on... Um, Rhyhorn over a red that I originally had, probably to bring out the ground typing more, and I think that's um that's a fine play. And then we put that red color on uh, Rhydon's belly instead, and I think that's just because I had too much of a, a brown thing going on. It was a little too homogenous, and uh, I'm also fine with that. Very small changes on this one. I definitely think I would work to make Rhyhorn's rocky stuff on it look less like magnets, just because I associate that so strongly with magnemite and a steel typing. But I think overall, they're still working. What I tried to put into them definitely reads. Let us know in the comments what you thought of these designs, and if you want to see more, you've got a lot of options. Our entire design archive is up on our Tumblr page, newin51.tumblr.com. The link is in the description. And we've just posted four new designs over the past week. Tauros, Magikarp and Gyarados, and Lapras are all up there. Hopefully. I'm recording this ahead of time and they're not yet ready yet. But they will be. <laughs> <laughs> you can also just watch this video series, or you can join us for our live streams where we develop our designs from their initial concepts and take live viewer feedback. Our next stream is scheduled for March 12th at noon Pacific time. If you're watching this video the day that it comes out, that's tomorrow. And we will be redesigning Ditto and Porygon. If anything changes with the schedule at the last minute, I will leave a pinned comment below. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Banana Meteor for joining me today. 
And thank you to all of the Libros who support me through Patreon or YouTube channel memberships, especially luxury patron Ethan from Chicago. I'll see you in the next chapter.